Naturally Curly World, I'm Geraldine, and this is Watch and Go, the series where we review movies and TV shows and fun things. I'm going to do a Watch and Go today and also review an amazing movie called The Killing of a Sacred Deer. And I don't understand why I should have to pay the price, why my children should have to pay the price. It's the only thing I can think of as close to justice. We can light it up, up, up. So they can put it out. This movie is mind boggling. Um, I've been on an emotional journey uh, since having watched this movie. I was not scared because it's not a scary movie. Uh, they titled it or, you know, they categorized it. And I say they as in critics, they categorized it as a psychological thriller. I categorize it as brain tickler, dinner conversation piece. Why did Colin Farrell do that? Uh, just, just so many categorizations. And right now, <laughs> I need to go ahead and get all up in here. Okay, so I'm back. I just got done shampooing my hair and now I'm about to apply this mask. It's a Sasha Pure Restorative Conditioning Mask. It has Sacha Inky oil in it and it is divine. Uh, gonna go ahead and put that on while I'll tell you about this movie. It's hard for me to articulate how disturbed I was by this film. Um, I've read a lot of recaps about it. I've, I've tried to wrap my mind and emotions around it. I still have a lot of trouble accepting the fact that there actually is a sacred deer in this film. Um, just to give you a little background, this film was directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. Yorgos Lanthimos, he's Greek. If I butchered your name, feel free to butcher mine. But this is my first um, introduction. This is my introduction to a Lanthimos film. And I have to say, even though I am still a little discombobulated, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I am applying. I am not detangling. All right. I know that y'all are saying, oh yeah, y'all are the experts. I done told y'all once. I'm going to tell you again. I'm lazy. This is my process. I just, I just work her in. What impressed me the most about this film was the very beginning. We were sitting in silence in this movie theater and all you hear and all you see is silence and see you see darkness, okay? It's just pitch black. Then there's an, like kind of an, a, an eruption of sound, if I remember correctly. And then it slowly starts opening up to this beautiful, also really gross scene. And I'm not gonna ruin it for you, because if I tell you what it is, you're not gonna watch it. However, I found it startlingly beautiful and grotesque and mesmerizing. And I said, oh yeah, I'm ready for this. I am ready for this film. I was not ready. I was not ready for this. I was waiting on my boy, Colin Farrell, because I dig Colin Farrell, let's be real, great actor. You know, he had a wild streak for, for a minute there. He does enter, his uh, character's name is Steven, or excuse me, Steve, Steve Murphy. Um, Steve is a surgeon. He has a lovely family. His wife, his, uh, her name is Anna. She's played by Nicole Kidman. And it's Nicole Kidman, she's awesome. So it was great to have her in the film. So really with Colin Farrell and with Nicole Kid Kidman, you understand the caliber of acting that you're about to see. I was not prepared for the antagonist. Uh, this young man, he is a young man. His name is Barry Cohen. He plays a character named Martin. I call him Martin the Malevolent. He's evil. He freaks me out. Steven, who's played by Colin Farrell, is a surgeon. Martin is this young man who kind of seems like he came out of nowhere when in fact, 
it he believes that Colin Farrell's character Stephen killed his dad in a surgery. I don't know his his reasoning for vengeance against Colin Farrell and his entire family. What's most striking to me is if somebody threatens your family, they threaten not just you, but like your children, your wife, and you sitting there like, you know, that's not gonna happen. You're joking. This isn't real. Um, I was just thrown by it. That's when you call the police, you know. Every single character in this film has this deadpan. And I think that's what's the most jarring for me is because it's not a regular human type of conversation that any of the characters are actually having. That particular lack of, uh, you know, inflection and the big magical cadences that we tend to do with our voices anyway or naturally, it, was, it wasn't there. And what filled in those really weird spaces where there was no emotion in the voice came sound or silence. And you didn't know which one you were gonna get based on the scene you were looking at. And that in particular was incredibly jilting for me. You did not know where any of the interactions would lead. All right, so I'm gonna go rinse out this conditioner and come back with more emotions. I just rinsed out the mask and my hair feels really, really soft and I love it. So what I need to do now, cause it's just a wash and go, is put some really great product in it. Um, I have a restructurizer from Affigy that I love. It makes uh, your hair strands not break off, <laughs> which everyone needs, right? And then uh, the Sasha Pure Curl Cream, which is excellent and uh, the Design Essentials Coconut and Manoy Intense Shine Oil Mist because, you know, uh, if you have 4C hair, it does not shine. Fact of life, you know, we live in it. We bask in the non-shine. However, if you put on this oil mist, you just go, that, that, that. girl, just be walking around just glistening, glowing, glittering. It's beautiful, I love it. Let's talk about the antagonist. Let's talk about him, Martin. I have problems with him only because I don't understand him. And that's what makes him so terrifying. That's what makes him so menacing and sinister. He doesn't come across as mean. Uh, he doesn't have like a face that'll contort with anger or fury. Very even keeled, well-balanced looking like teenager, right? but it's the way that he talks to Colin Farrell's character, Steve. It's the way that he says, if you do not do what I say or make a choice, I'm going to harm you. And it's the delivery, it's that acting. I mean, my goodness, it just gets right under your skin, just enough to where you, you doubt him. You doubt that this teenager has any real power to do anything with these, the, with the lives of these people. Lo and behold, <laughs> he has full control, full control. And um, another thing that terrifies me about that and him is that you as a viewer, you put yourself in Steve's shoes. You're wondering, what would I do if I were Steve? You're even thinking, what would I do if I were Anna, the mother, the Nicole Kidman and her character? And I, I leave a comment or two and tell me what you would do. I know what I would do, but y'all wouldn't like what I would do. <laughs> we can talk about the end of the movie, or you can just watch it and come to your own conclusion. I have issues with it. I wanted something different to happen and that's okay. That's actually what made me love this movie is because after I left it, I left the movie theater and it was still on my mind. What would I do in that situation? What does this movie mean? Why did this happen to and at me? So I give The Killing of a Sacred Deer five out of five stars. 
if you like movies that are thought provoking, that stay with you for days, weeks, years, this is the movie for you. Because it, it will change your perspective on a lot of things. It, it's gonna mess you up. It's gonna, it's gonna mess you up if you don't like movies like that. I love movies like that. If you feel me, go watch it. It's fantastic. That's it. That's my watch and go. If you like these videos, please like, share, and subscribe. We show watch and goes every Wednesday, so we'll see you next week. Bye.